In the center of Rome on the Capitol Hill is one of the great treasures of the Italian Renaissance, Capitol Square. It was Michelangelo in the middle of the 16th century who conceived of it and designed it. The artist envisioned each element that makes up the square, from the buildings to the sculptures, down to the decoration of the pavement as a unique reality in itself. And it's one of these buildings which houses the Capitoline Museums, the guardians of permanent collections, and every now and then, of temporary exhibitions too. Like this exhibit here now, dedicated to El Greco's The Annunciation. Only one work on the first floor of the Palazzo dei Conservatori in the middle of an empty room. Sergio Guarino, the curator of the exhibit, has specifically asked for this layout so that each visitor can be introduced to the astounding beauty of the painting by getting rid of any other sort of distraction. The work was the presentation piece of a big canvas that Dominikos Theotokopoulos, better known as El Greco, realized for a big altarpiece intended for the Augustinian convent of Nuestra Señora de la Incarnación in Madrid, Spain. Unfortunately, we don't have a precise idea of what the original altarpiece looked like. There exists a series of notes and documents of the time, and some sources speak of the beauty of this altarpiece and of El Greco's genius. But we don't have any authentic description of what it looked like. And this has, of course, originated a lot of discussions and debates about the original composition of the altarpiece. At the moment, scholars agreed that the original altarpiece in Madrid was made up of six large panels, each one about three meters high, and of a seven smaller panel that concluded the cycle. So we can clearly say that this was one of the most important works of El Greco's career. For Sergio Guarino, we're in front of a work of art of incredible theological complexity. It shows much more than the title itself describes. The work is not really set in a specific space. We don't know if we're indoors or outdoors. The only clear material indication is the reading stand on the left. The Virgin was clearly praying. There's a book of prayer lying on the stand. And this is the traditional way of depicting this scene, the Annunciation. But this is really the only detail which indicates an indoor scene, nothing else. The only two other elements are between the Virgin and the Archangel. There's a basket in which you can clearly see a white cloth. And then there's an unusual presence, which we will talk about later, the burning bush of Moses. On the right, a little cloud, the angel. All these situations, be they people or objects, are placed on different planes. Nothing is on the same plane as the others. And this is, of course, recalls El Greco's typical unbalance, which made him not a reassuring painter. At the top, the angels playing music. At the center, the dove of the Holy Spirit. And all the spaces are filled with clouds with little cherub heads. Not one single space is left empty. There's this horror vacuum, fear of the empty. Everything is full. The basket with the veil in the foreground is a clear allusion to the presentation of Mary in the temple. The episode of the Annunciation is told only in the Gospel of Luke. We all know the story very well. The archangel comes, he manifests his presence to Mary by saying the first words of the Hail Mary, and he announces to her the birth, that she will be the mother of the Savior. At this point, the Gospel says, Mary is troubled and replies, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And this is precisely the moment depicted in the painting. On one side, there's Mary in her right hand raised as a sign of greeting, but at the same time, she looks like she's lost, not understanding. And she seems to be saying to the angel, hold on, let me understand, please. As if she was interrupting the speech. And with her left hand, instead, she's pointing at the burning bush. Now, this is clearly a very specific reference. This episode is told as the first manifestation of God to Moses in the form of a bush, which is set on fire, but never consumed by the flames. And a school of thought in theology has related Moses' burning bush and Mary's virginity. So El Greco's painting depicts the moment when the Virgin Mary is troubled after the words spoken by the angel, seeing her right hand and asks how that can be possible, her left hand pointing to her virginity. We all know what the angel replied. He said that this will be possible because the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And there you have suddenly the dove of the Holy Spirit and Mary gazing at it. And so we can say that this painting is not so much a depiction of the Annunciation as of the Incarnation, and this makes sense because the Augustinian convent was meant for what was dedicated to Our Lady of the Incarnation.
through a meticulous study of symbolism and the fusion of various artistic styles, El Greco brought to life what Sergio Guarino calls the third way of artistic expression in the Renaissance. So this is the moment when the Italian religious painting tradition is taking two different paths. The first path with the Karachi, and so classicism. Religion as revelation, with reference to classical forms and poses. So these very beautiful saints and Madonnas, the image of perfection. I'm thinking about Guido René's Gidette. Perfectly dressed, beautiful robes. The second path was Caravaggio's disturbing uneasiness, these deeply tormented figures, and the strong naturalism in depicting them. And here we have El Greco finding a third path, the path of abstraction. He takes away any precise reference. There are no classical references, no realistic references either. Every single element is highlighted with the force of light and colors. Especially here in this painting, his showcase, if you will, because he had to use this as a business card to his clients in Madrid. You can see very clearly that this was created by a master of the technique, especially in his use of color. Look at the most important colors in the mantle and the clothes of the Virgin. This red here and this dark blue, and in clear contrast to them, the green of the angel's robe. They're all unbalanced though. There's no security. The angel is on a cloud and there's another cloud above. His feet are in front of us directly, but as he has to twist his torso so he can go towards Mary. Even the angel, the angel sent by God, is precarious, unstable. There's nothing to do but hold on. The only certainty is that God is the center of everything. Holy Ghost coming in at the center gives sense to the whole scene. This awkwardness typical of El Greco's works was certainly the main hurdle for the artist on his way to being successful while still alive. His dramatic style and expressionism didn't share the security that the Renaissance man looked for in religion. After his death, he fell into oblivion and was rediscovered only in the 20th century. Since then, he's been an inspiration to many contemporary artists.